Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. All right, Democrats held a press conference outside President Trump's hush money trial today and invited actor Robert De Niro. De Niro had no shortage of criticism for Trump and his supporters, including one man who criticized Capitol Police officers who served on January 6th. Let's watch. They stood and put their lives on the line for these low lives, for Trump. They lied under oath. They lied under oath. Right. Who lied under oath? Those what are you, what are you telling me? You. Those two traitors lying. Excuse me? Those two traitors lying. You. They lied under oath? That's right. What are you saying? They're traitors. They're, tra they're traitors. You got to, I don't know, I don't even know how to deal with you, my friend. So what on earth was going on with it? Why did they bring in Robert De Niro? Uh, well, you, you see, they're trying to save democracy, which is why they definitely don't want to give the perception that Trump is at this trial because the Biden... Because it's a media sensation? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say because the Biden DOJ and its allies are committed to persecuting Donald Trump, and so they're going to prove that they're not doing that by holding a press conference outside of the trial with a famed actor who uh, has recently become notorious for yelling F Trump at award shows. Mm -hmm. Very normal stuff. Um, but... I guess on, on the Capitol Police thing, that guy I think is talking about the Blaze documentary that they did showing the disparity between what those two Capitol Police officers testified to versus what was shown on camera on January 6th. And so I won't go as far to say that they lied. I know that sometimes people misremember things when they've been through a traumatic incident, uh, but there were discrepancies there. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I don't know what, look, I don't care. Did, Robert De Niro can say whatever he wants to say. I don't. I don't care. I don't see what the point of involving him is. Um, it's like trotting out. It's like one of the other when they put together those celebrity videos where they're all like weighing in on some public um, issue. I'm like, I don't know who this is for. I don't get it. Like when we, they all sing Imagine during the pandemic. That or it's, it's yeah. It's like get vaccinated. Vaccinated. Right. Are you vaccinated? Like this, they say the same thing over and over again. I just don't get it. But yeah, people were reacting to this on social media because it did turn into some kind of brouhaha, right? He was like fighting with the with the crowd. Uh, maybe, maybe this is in response to, you know, Trump was, was in New York, like making a play to New York voters. And I guess Democrats were like, we're going to bring in a real New Yorker. Like he said some other things about Trump not being a tough guy, like he's not, he's never taken a punch. I'm like, what is this? It's just so weird to me, but. Well, nothing is tougher than that kick that Robert De Niro did in The Irishman, right? I didn't see that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they had, so they de-aged him, right? Oh. But he's he goes up and he's supposed to be like kicking this guy because he's like a tough mobster. But he's walking like an old man. He's just got that old man walk and he can't really balance to kick properly mm -hmm. and it's just hysterical you really should watch it but yeah I think that's what they were trying to do they were mad that Trump had this successful Bronx rally so they're like oh well Robert De Niro he'll he'll prove that we've still got the New Yorkers in our camp and he also talked about uh, this claim that if Trump wins re-election that he's not gonna leave office he repeated it about six times that he's you know he's not gonna leave I mean he's he not didn't go leave. quietly <laughs> into that good night last time but he left well <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, maybe um, I, there's some interesting uh, Trump news just today that um, uh, the, the gag order in the Jack Smith case uh, failed again in court. This is something that even, you know, like the ACLU has said, this is an abridgment of Trump's free speech. This time I think it was relating to um, that truth he had about uh, Biden's DOJ being like locked and loaded. And he, he didn't say, now other people, like Marjorie Taylor Greene said, this is proof they were trying to assassinate Trump. I found that whole thing pretty overblown because like it is common, like the, 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 the warrant for the investigation in the Biden documents case also stipulated that the, like the, the officers are always um, like capable of using legal force. That's just how, it, how it's written. And Trump was not, they knew Trump was not at Mar-a-Lago at the time they did the raid. So I, I thought that whole thing was a little, I mean, you cannot like the way the authorities raid people's homes and property. I certainly don't as a civil liberties person. I think like doing those raids in the middle of the night where you like 
you know, scare everyone and you drag people out and like it seems that the, the, the maximizing the potential for there to be harm one way or the other is like not good practice, but it is regular practice. And sometimes I think people on the right only notice like violations of civil liberties when Trump is in fact the target of them, which is not to take away from that, but he's not like he's not the first person where there was like a, a, a sketchy FISA court decision, right? They, it's like, oh, so, oh, FISA courts are a bad thing. Like I've been saying they're a bad thing for forever. <laughs> Well, then you should welcome that people are well, I Yeah, but they only, only care when it's Trump. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I will say I thought that Dan Bongino's tweet on this, and I, you know, I, I'm sure I can see, tell by your face you don't like that, what I'm saying. But, uh, but we'll keep going. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, he was a Secret Service agent, and he pointed out that one of the big troubles with the, um, the warrant that included the authorization for lethal force is that you have this situation where you have Secret Service officers protecting Trump, and then you have the FBI coming in for the raid, and because you have these two sort of conflicting authorities, it's generally a good idea to focus more on de-escalation in those situations, and he talked about examples of when they were raiding like Russian oligarchs' homes and how they would um, amend the lethal force section of their warrants because they didn't want to cause some like big incident where they accidentally shot somebody they weren't supposed to shoot or, or whatever, and there was confusion. So I thought that was an interesting perspective. That makes sense to me. Again, I think that should be standard operating procedure. Let's try not to shoot anyone well, accidentally. Sure. I, I hope the government would, I mean, I'm not trusting them to do this, but as a normal operating procedure, it would be great if they took tremendous pain not to shoot people accidentally or randomly or in Yeah, and, and I guess what I meant is that you <laughs> but, don't want to don't wanna escalate a situation where someone, you know, pulls out a gun because they right. don't know what's happening or whatever it is. But um, no, I, I completely agree. And I, I think the other sort of fascinating aspect about De Niro coming out on this day of the trial is that this is, of course, closing arguments. And this is the only trial against Trump that is likely to be concluded before the November election. And so this is really kind of the last chance of the Biden administration and its Democratic allies to label Trump a convicted felon before the election. Uh, and so this is like, they're yeah. golden goose. Like, they need this really badly. But this is not, I mean, if this is their strategy, their strategy is bad. Because <laughs> this is not Evergreen changing statement. anyone's mind. I don't think this affects, I'm, I don't know whether the other trials would have been different, but this one, I don't see any evidence. I mean, we're not seeing any evidence in the polls or anything else that people are paying attention to this and going, oh, I just, now I, now I can't vote for Trump. I was going to vote for him, but now I'm not voting for him. It's not. It's not happening. Biden is behind um, in in the you know the pivotal five or six swing states that are going to decide this election. It's close in some of them. Things could change, but it's not going to be the trial that changes them. No, I don't think so. I mean, Trump's within one percentage point in Virginia of all states, mm -hmm. and Nikki Haley says she's going to vote for Trump, who she's been one of the most critical people. Yeah, she his, was so, always going. to. I knew well, that was going to happen. I knew that she too, wants a future in the party. Sure. You have but, to. But she then was you have come and home. Chris Sununu, New Hampshire said yeah. he's going to vote for Trump, even if he gets convicted of the felony. So when you have people like that being like, "Yeah, we're going to hold our nose and vote for him," blah blah blah. Like, yeah. I think signs are pretty good that this case is not going to affect a whole lot, even if the conviction comes down in the Democrats' favor. Hmm. All right, more free media right after this.